I come to the floor because I'm very disturbed about some actions coming up out of EPA affecting biofuels and contrary to what the president promised. In other words, I think people working for the president aren't following the president's direction. As my colleagues know well, I've championed renewable fuels and other energies uh, for a long period of time. I've worked hard to enact policies to encourage the growth of renewable electricity from sources such as wind and solar. The same is true for biofuels. I've pursued policies to grow our country's production of renewable fuels such as conventional corn ethanol, biodiesel, and cellulosic ethanol. I support renewable energy because it's good for the economy. It's good for our national security. It's good for our balance of trade. It's good for the rural economies. And it's good for energy independence. I was pleased that in the most recent presidential election, then-candidate Trump, now our president, made clear his support for ethanol and the renewable fuel standard. He said clearly, quote, we're going to protect the renewable fuel standard, end of quote. On another occasion, candidate Trump recognized the benefits of the industry when he said at an ethanol biorefinery, quote, amazing what you've been able to do, amazing. And it's great for the country. And the investment is great, beyond even the product, the investment and the jobs and everything else are great for the country, end of quote. Finally, at a summit focusing on renewable fuels in Iowa, yet as a candidate, January 2016, Mr. Trump said this, quote, the RFS, which is the renewable fuel standard, is an important tool in the mission to achieve energy independence to the United States. I will do all that is in my power as president to achieve that goal. As president, I will encourage Congress to be cautious in attempting to charge and change any part of the RFS. Energy independence is a requirement of America to become great again. My theme, the president continues, is Make America great again. It's an important part of it. The EPA should ensure that biofuel RVOs and blend levels match the statutory level set by Congress under the RFS. End of candidate Trump's quote. These are, in fact, very strong words and went over well with farmers and alternative energy people in my state and throughout the country. And I'm glad that he said them. After years of delay, after years of delay and uncertainty from the previous administration, Iowans are very grateful to hear such determination and conviction from a candidate Trump, now a President Trump. I was somewhat cautious early on when the president, the now president, named a few members of his cabinet who were from oil producing states. So fearful of big oil's opposition to biofuels and then concerned about whether the president would keep his promise or not, I, along with a number of my Senate colleagues, held a meeting in my office with the nominees for director of EPA and secretary of energy, among others. We expressed to those candidates, those nominees, our support for biofuels and renewable energy and the benefits of a strong biofuels policies. One by one, these nominees assured us of their support because they were made well aware of President Trump's support 
by the president himself. They told us they knew who was boss, and they knew the president supported the renewable fuel standard. About a month ago, the president even called me. I was traveling northwest Iowa with my town meetings. Called me. We talked on the cell phone for maybe just a couple of minutes. He was somewhat worried, although he didn't say why he was worried, that people might be uh, questioning whether he still supported uh, ethanol and other biofuels. He made very clear to me that he supports renewable fuels and that he will keep his word on the renewable fuel standard. And he said in calling me that he wanted me to tell the people of Iowa that. Well, there's a lot of ways you can tell the people of Iowa, but one of the days I did it, one of the ways I did what he asked is I tweeted it to my 140,000 people that are on my uh, Twitter. So I've done what he asked me to do. So here we are today. You can imagine my surprise this very day when I see that President Trump's EPA has released a proposal out of the blue to reduce the volume requirements for biodiesel for 2018 and 2019 under the Renewable Fuel Standard. That's the RFS. This action today has come out of nowhere. The EPA just released a proposal in July to set blending levels for biodiesel. It did not touch the 2018 level, which was already finalized at two and one-tenth billion gallons. The July proposal would keep the 2019 levels steady at two and one-tenth billion gallons. Now, this is what happened today that I've already referred to. Today's announcement proposes to reduce both levels, contrary to what the president has said that he was supporting. It's outrageous that the EPA would change course and propose a reduction in renewable fuel volumes in this particular way. This seems like a bait and switch from the EPA's prior proposal and from assurances from President Trump himself and from those cabinet secretaries who came to my office to assure us of their support for the RFS. So, reducing volumes, as the EPA proposes, would undermine the renewable fuel production that's contrary to the worthwhile goal of America first. It'll undermine U.S. workers and harm the U.S. economy, particularly in rural America. It's contrary to the goal of meeting the country's fuel needs through domestic production, which is critical to job creation and economic growth. This will give, this all gives me a strong suspicion that big oil companies and big oil refineries are prevailing once again in this Trump EPA like they did in the Obama administration despite assurances to the contrary that I have received from this administration. So you can bet that I plan to press the administration to drop this terrible plan. I hope the officials working for the president will keep the president's word. So I'll make sure that EPA hears loud and clear the impact the EPA's proposal will have on Iowa's corn and soybean farmers and the biofuel producers in my state and all the jobs connected with it. That's not a way to make America strong once again.